Sovereign carbon is a relatively new idea when it comes to the topic of climate change investing and carbon offsets. And in this video, we'll explore what is sovereign carbon and what does it mean from an investment standpoint and from a carbon offset standpoint. In August of this year, Quantum Commodity Intelligence had a story about Gabon was going to be claiming 184 million metric tons of carbon credits. And it turns out that those tons are coming under a new standard, the TREES standard, the Red Plus Environmental Excellence Standard. And we'll get into that in more detail in just a second. But first, it's always useful to go back and remember what we're grappling with when it comes to thinking about carbon and greenhouse gases generally as a commodity. I like this quote from journalist Mark Shapiro, who makes the point that unlike traditional commodities, which sometime during the course of their market exchange must be delivered to someone in physical form, the carbon market is based on the lack of delivery of an invisible substance to no one. And that is a shorthand way of pointing out the challenge and the potential for gaming when it comes to carbon as a tradable commodity. So I would suggest from the outset that whenever any of us talk about commoditizing carbon, we have a relatively high standard to meet when it comes to demonstrating how we're going to do that in the context established here by Mark Shapiro. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a white paper that Deutsche Bank's chief investment office put out on October 11th of this year. And it's a relatively short paper. I think it only runs five pages of text, and most of it is about nature-based solutions and the importance of climate change, et cetera. But the one really important paragraph is the paragraph that I have here, where they argue that sales of national scale UNFCCC Red Plus credits can help generate financing to reduce and perhaps reverse deforestation. And they make the very interesting point, and this is why it's coming out of the chief investment office, that the existing bifurcation of compliance and voluntary markets can now post COP26 be set on a path to convergence through making possible the voluntary purchase of what is in effect a compliance grade asset that tackles climate change. Sovereign Carbon will encourage a wider range of market participants to empower and finance progress towards the Paris Agreement net zero targets. So let's parse that out for a second and let's think about Sovereign Carbon as a compliance grade asset. Now, I would suggest that the way that you get a compliance grade asset is you do a number of things in the context of climate change and the Paris Agreement and greenhouse gas trading. First, you establish a binding global climate target. Second, you establish a declining cap to achieve that target as you would in any cap and trade system. Third, if you want to do sovereign carbon from forests, you have to make sure that forests and potentially other land uses are included under that cap. Then you agree on an allocation of the cap across all the world's countries you put into place an effective accounting system to track progress and compliance. You establish trading and allow for trading between countries under the cap facilitated by that accounting system. And you put into place an effective enforcement mechanism to make sure that the whole thing actually works in advancing progress towards a global climate target. When you do all of that, then you plausibly have a compliance grade asset in the form of sovereign carbon. Unfortunately, none of these elements are currently in place when it comes to global targets, global caps, forests under the caps. And so I'm really not sure what the Deutsche Bank paper means when it talks about a compliance grade asset. So what about sovereign carbon as a voluntary offset, which is basically what it is. It's important to remember several things about offsets before we get into the topic of sovereign carbon. The first is that carbon offsets avoid the emission of greenhouse gases to or remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Now, because carbon offsets implicitly or explicitly allow another ton 
of CO2e to be emitted somewhere else. And that means they have to be additional. They wouldn't have otherwise occurred, but for the existence of the carbon market, they have to be permanent and they shouldn't leak. And I'm not going to go into any more details on those topics here. What's being called sovereign carbon today and the reason for the new protocol is that sovereign carbon has not been able to qualify as an offset generally because the forests in question haven't been under immediate threat. So all of the different protocols that already exist for stopping deforestation or preventing the emission of carbon from deforestation haven't applied to this new category of sovereign carbon. So where does the concept come from? What about all the carbon being kept out of the atmosphere through effective local and national stewardship of soils and forests? The point being, shouldn't that stewardship be rewarded? And if we don't reward that stewardship, are we setting the stage for potential deforestation in the future? And so that's where sovereign carbon comes in and the idea of allowing offsets to come from what's called high forest, low deforestation countries like Gabon. And other people are doing the same thing in promoting the sale of soil carbon being protected by small scale farmers around the world. You can go online and purchase those carbon offsets as well. But what does all this mean for offset markets? That's the key question. And I don't know the answers to these questions, but the obvious questions are, how many tons of sovereign carbon will or could find their way into voluntary markets under the existing trees protocol? Is it billions? Are all of those tons non-additional false positives under traditional offset rules? In other words, they shouldn't qualify under traditional offset rules because you can't demonstrate that they're additional, that they're resulting from the existence and operation of the carbon market. In other words, they weren't under obvious threat, but how can non-additional sovereign carbon offsets advance progress towards net zero under the Paris Agreement? It seems like a zero sum game. You're creating more offsets here. You're allowing more emissions somewhere else. How are you making progress towards net zero if these tons are not additional? And by the way, the sovereign carbon proponents basically acknowledge that they're not additional and they want to redefine additionality to make it possible to bring those tons into the market. So next question is, how much will sovereign carbon sales depress voluntary carbon market prices? If you bring in billions of tons, presumably you're going to depress prices. And to what extent will that interfere with climate change mitigation revenue flows, which is what's really being touted in the Deutsche Bank piece? Very importantly, what else might be considered sovereign carbon other than the tropical forest being covered under this protocol? For example, soils. What about fossil fuel deposits that countries don't tap? Could there be protocols in the future that allow those sovereign carbon tons into offset markets? And there are trillions of potential tons along those lines. So anytime you start down the path of doing something new with a market like greenhouse gases and carbon offsets, you need to think through what are you opening the door to and explicitly tackle that question. So these are the questions that, that I don't have great answers to, but these are the questions that should have been discussed and answered in Deutsche Bank's chief investment office white paper, and none of them are broached, much less answered. And it makes me think back to 2008 when we had cold callers, carbon trading, cold callers calling pensioners and retired people saying, buy low, sell high, carbon offset's going to go through the roof and carbon markets collapsed the following year. And in a sense, that's what this white paper is doing is adding to that kind of market pitch. And I'm a little bit surprised that Deutsche Bank would do that and that as lawyers would allow it to do that. I hope you found this video useful and informative. I'd welcome your feedback and I'd invite you to visit the climate web.